Greetings and welcome to the Math Buffet panel on the great author, inventor, magician, and mathematician Lewis Carroll. I'm Mark Burstein, a lifelong collector and scholar of his works, about which I've contributed to a number of books, including editing and art directing the latest edition of Martin Gardner's The Annotated Alice. Uh, I will be joined today by Chris Morgan, the founding editor of Byte Magazine, current editor of the Knife Letter, the magazine of the Lewis Carroll Society of North America, a computer scientist, author, and amateur magician. Then Stan Isaacs, a renowned Carolian, computer systems analyst, teacher, and puzzle collector. And Stuart Moskowitz, who recently retired from teaching mathematics at Humboldt State up in the California Redwoods, and is a devotee of the mathematical puzzles of Lewis Carroll. Well, speaking of Mr. Gardner, here's what he had to say. I share with Carroll the following loves, mathematics, puzzles, formal logic, and conjuring. Carol delighted in showing simple magic tricks to his child friends and to take them to performances by magicians. More than any other books for children, his two Alice books swarm with logical, mathematical, and linguistic jokes. Well, the best place to read about them, of course, is in The Annotated Alice. And Lewis Carroll, as many of you know, <coughs> was the pen name of Charles Lutwidge Dodson, who was a lecturer, or as we would say in America, associate professor of mathematics at Oxford his entire life, and the author of 60 or so books or pamphlets on mathematics and logic. Carroll was also a ceaseless inventor of puzzles involving recreational math and wordplay. Along with various devices, such as the stamp case, he was the divisor of a system for recording and accessing his 98,000 plus letters that is called by some one of the first databases. <clears throat> he was a master of the medium known as photography in its earliest days, a contributor to the field of cryptography, a game designer, and very possibly the first person in the world to go computer shopping. When he stopped by the house of Charles Babbage in January of 1867 to inquire if such a thing as an analytical engine <clears throat> could be had. Well, it was over a century before personal computers were around, so he was, yes, a bit ahead of his time. In today's world, he's been studied at length. Here, for example, are five books about his contributions to math and logic. There are any number of books about his puzzles. Note that uh, Douglas Hofstadter's Pulitzer Prize winning Gödel Escher Bach is in, subtitled A Metaphorical Fugue on Minds and Machines in the Spirit of Lewis Carroll. In the 25 years Martin Gardner wrote his mathematical games column for Scientific American, Lewis Carroll was the most referenced individual. Well, in this brief introduction, I will elide over some of Carroll's discoveries, such as this way he found to memorize pi to 71 decimals and the logarithms of all the prime numbers under 100, his thoughts on voting algorithms, circular billiards, geometric problems, his famous logic paradoxes, and so on. But I would like to leave you with his introduction to what he called the dynamics of a particle, which he wrote in 1865, the same year as Alice's Adventures in Wonderland was published. It was actually a satire of uh, parliamentary elections. <clears throat> but here are his words, which he mischievously attributes to an admired contemporary mathematician, Carl Gustav Jacobi. Or Jacobi. <clears throat> It was a lovely autumn evening, and the glorious effects of chromatic aberration were beginning to show themselves in the atmosphere as the earth revolved away from the great western luminary, when two lines might have been observed wending their weary way across a plain superficies. The elder of the two had by long practice acquired the art, so painful to young and impulsive loci, of lying evenly between his extreme points. But the younger, in her girlish impetuosity, was ever longing to diverge and become a hyperbola or some such romantic and boundless curve. They had lived and loved. Fate and the intervening superficies had hitherto kept them asunder, but this was no longer to be. A line had intersected them, marking, making the two interior angles together less than two right angles. It was a moment never to be forgotten, and as they journeyed on, 
a whisper thrilled along the superficies in isochronous waves of sound. Yes, we shall at length meet if continually produced. Well, please join us if you like. Uh, Lewis Carroll Society of North America at lewiscarroll.org. Thank you.